Hey, thanks so much for checking this video out. Uh, as you know, the staff have been talking about spiritual practices. We've all been called to spiritual practices uh, throughout this season of Lent, and, and the staff have been talking about at least one of their practices. So it's it's my turn, and I'm going to tell you what mine is here in just a moment. But to set up why it's so important to me, I want to point something out to you, and maybe maybe this is true of you as well. But I find myself with people all the time. I mean, I am with people all the time. And, and I love it because I'm a people person. But today's a great example. I started off my morning with a Zoom call with colleagues. And then after that, uh, an in-person uh, one-on with a staff member. And then uh, another uh, meeting with our teaching team. And then impromptu uh, gathering and meeting with staff. And uh, here in just a little bit, I'm heading back to the office. And that's when uh, we will gather a, a good number of us for Wednesday evening dinner at church. And then we're having Psalm Kids at church and then I will uh, finish off my my day by going home and Kathy after having a long day as well will probably get home about the same time tonight so we'll be together then so I'm with people all the time and and, and again I love it I'm an extrovert I'm a people person I derive a special kind of energy from being with people whether it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a small group gathering or being gathered with everybody in worship and, and with many, many more people. I just love being with people. But here's the thing. I need to practice silence and solitude. That's my spiritual practice that I'm talking about. Silence and solitude. And I often do it in a place like this where of course it's not absolutely silent. You probably can hear the bird in the background, maybe the, the babbling of the creek behind me a little bit. Those are the kinds of sounds that actually, like silence, draw me more deeply into the very presence of God. I get to do a lot of talking. I get to do a lot of teaching and preaching, but I also try to do a lot of listening. I try to listen to you, to all that whom I encounter, I try to listen to God in places like this, especially, and listen to what my own soul and heart seems to be tell, talking to me and telling me at any given moment. The psalmist in Psalm 42 says, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. And I gotta tell you, friends, that when I come to places like this, I feel my soul longing for the living water. I, I feel my heart panting to be more fully in the presence of God. And it doesn't have to be a place like this in the outdoors, although again, often it is for me. I have a place in the house that I can just go and be quiet and sit in a comfortable chair, sometimes with my Bible, sometimes a verse will come to mind, sometimes I might look something up, sometimes I might utter something in prayer silently, but more often than not, I'm just trying to open my mind and my heart to God and just be fully present for God in silence. Again, the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. It's in those moments when I still myself that I experience God so powerfully. So I wanna encourage you to do this. Try it if you don't do it already. For me, it was life-changing a few years ago when I incorporated this into my weekly Sabbath and even into my daily routine as much as I can to just shut down the noise, shut down the devices, open my heart more fully to God, and just listen, if it's even for a few brief moments, to God. What I want you to do right now is to take 30 seconds. I want you to take 30 seconds as you see and, and listen to the, the beautiful silence that's not completely silent, of this running creek behind me and experience what God has for you. God bless you.